Hi, my name is Amy Heisey, and this is my cat Scully, and I'm going to be walking you through how to draw St. John the Baptist in today's tutorial. We celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist on June 24th, and I'm going to show you how to draw him using simple lines and simple shapes. For this project, you need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw an oval for his head. So his head is a little bit more squared off at the bottom for where his beard is going to go. So when I draw in my oval, I'm going to have it be slightly more flat on the bottom where I want his beard to be, but a little bit more rounded up at the top. And you, of course, can make any kind of head shape that you want on yours. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on his torso. So his clothing is described as being made out of camel hair. So it has like this really rough and kind of jagged appearance. So what I'm going to do is by his neck, I'm going to kind of do like a bumpy line like this around his neck. And I want to do some bumpy lines over here on each side of his neck to create his shoulders. I wanna create some lines that come down for the sides of his body, but those are also kind of bumpy. So I just kind of move my pencil in and out, creating kind of like a wavy line as I work my way down until I want to stop for his waist. And I wanna do the same thing on this other side. I'm kind of moving my pencil in and out, creating like a bumpy line like that. I want to connect them down at the bottom. So again, I'm moving my pencil up and down, creating a wavy, bumpy line for his clothing. And he has this curved line here for this belt. The curve is kind of similar to a smile. So on the left side, I'm going to start and do a slightly curved line, connecting it over on the right side. You can make that as thick or as thin as you want in your artwork. I'm also gonna do some wavy lines down here for the bottom of his clothing. So starting where my belt is, I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm just gonna move it in and out, creating a kind of bumpy line. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this right side, move my pencil in and out, kind of like waves to create the bumpiness of his clothing and stop. So I have him standing in the water, ready to baptize Jesus. And I want to create this part where his body is going into the water. So I'm going to do a curved line, kind of like a smile, that connects one side of his bottom of his clothing to the other side. I'm also going to draw this straight line here um, to create the top part of the water. So a little bit higher than the curve, I'm going to do one line coming off this way on this right side. And I just wanna make sure that it lines up on the opposite side, kind of like this. And we'll come back and do these water ripples later. What we're going to do next is we're going to start to put in our um, two arms. So um, how about we start up um, here with this arm. So we have these two diagonal lines that come down from the shoulder, creating the width of his arm. So starting at the top, I'm going to do one line that comes down like this and I'm going to start about here and have it come down a little bit long like that. So they're parallel. And then his arm is bent up going this direction. So I'm going to do one line that comes up like this. So now I have kind of like this V. And I'm going to do a similar line going up, but leaving a little bit of space for his arm and his wrist. So this hand is um, out and open, it's holding the water. Sometimes you see him in artwork holding a seashell filled with water. Um, I'm going to be doing his hands, but if you'd like to change it up, feel free to make any changes that you want. We're gonna do kind of like a mitten shape for his hand. We're gonna do a smaller curve for his thumb and a bigger curve for his bigger fingers. So the thumb goes up on the top 
So I'm going to start um, here where my wrist ended and I'm going to do a small curve for his thumb and I'm going to do a big curve for his big fingers and connect that to this line right here. I want to separate this big curve into fingers so I'm going to add one, two, three lines and that separates his hand into four big fingers and his thumb. I have a little bit of water collected on his hand so I'm going to be doing a wavy oval shape like that and I'm going to add some little drops of water coming down pointed at the top and round at the bottom. And I like to do things in three because it reminds me of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're gonna do this hand next. So this hand is holding the staff, um, this cross staff. And so his hand is um, up by his shoulder. So I wanna start off with a curve like this, and that is creating this fist. I'm gonna be doing a curve here for this side of his arm so it comes out and around. Think like a parenthesis. And then I'm gonna have it connect to his torso about halfway. I want to add a line here, kind of by the fingers, and that's kind of separating this, these parts of the arm. We're going to separate these into fingers, so I'm going to add one, two, three lines, and that kind of separates this hand into the knuckles of his hand grasped around that staff. And for his staff, um, we're going to start kind of near where his head is. You're going to draw a line that comes down, stops at his hand, and we're going to continue that line on the opposite side and drop it down into the water. And we're going to do a shorter line that comes across like here and that actually creates a cross staff that he is holding. And because this staff kind of comes down into the water, we want it to stop where his waist is. I'm going to add a little curved line here so it looks like the water is rippling around that staff and I can add extra curves um, to create more ripples around both the staff and his body and you can do however many or few that you would like on yours. I just kind of move my pencil around trying to match the curve of his body or to kind of create waves and ripple lines as I work my way around. We're going to be working on his hair next. These areas of his hair, it kind of reminds me of the letter W. I don't know if you can kind of see that. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So near the top of his head, I'm going to draw the letter W. So I'm going to do a line that comes down, goes up, comes down, and comes up. I'm going to do a swoop line that comes down towards the right. And I'm going to do a swoop line that comes down towards the left. At the top of his head, I'm going to do bumpy lines to create the waves of his hair and I'm going to stop at his neck and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to do wavy lines coming around his head and stopping at his neck. For his face I have two simple circles so I'm going to do my circles kind of near the middle of my oval shape like this. And in between his eyes and the bottom of his chin, kind of in the middle, I'm going to do a slightly curved line for the bottom of his nose. And there's this line right here that kind of comes up and that creates the bridge of his nose or like that side edge. In between his nose and his beard, I'm going to do two curved lines that connect together 
like this. And that creates kind of like a hint of like a mustache. I'm going to do a wavy line starting at his nose and connecting to the edge of his face to create that part of his beard on the right side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, kind of like a wavy line that comes up and connects to the side of his face over on the left side. He has thick eyebrows, so I did a slight curve above each eye like this. And I did a similar line on top and I'm connecting it so it's narrow at the points and thicker in the center. Next, we're gonna work on coloring him. So I'm gonna be using markers because that's what shows up well on camera. And when I like to use markers, I like to start off by outlining my artwork with pens like these. You, of course, can use any art supplies that you wish for yours. Thank you so much for following along. I would love to see how your drawings turned out and if you made any changes, like maybe you added the Holy Spirit or some locusts and honey, I would love to see it. Feel free to tag me on social media. If you enjoyed following along with today's tutorial, know that I post new Catholic inspired art tutorials here on my channel every week. Another way you can support the channel is through my buy me a coffee page and art supply wish list. I want to remind you that you are loved. God loves you very much and he loves your artwork very much. Thank you so much for following along and I'll see you in the next video.